Hey family, welcome back. Marshawn Alanio here, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And you keep coming back to Marshawn O because you want to be a part of the top 1% of couples that have extraordinary relationships. Now, who am I? Why should you subscribe? Why should you share my videos? Why should you give me thumbs up? Because again, I am Marshawn Alanio, but I'm also, I help women are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling unloved and disconnected and shift them to feeling loved appreciated all while creating the intimate relationship and moments that she craves but also needs so if you know anybody like that if it's yourself then subscribe to the channel and then of course share the video with someone that you know needs to hear this message now with that being said um, about a week ago, week or so ago, I actually shared a video about how to improve yourself before you get into a relationship. And now this particular video is going to speak about how to improve yourself once you say yes to being in a relationship, in a committed relationship with someone. Um, of course, I'm going to link the previous video up here because maybe you need to get some information. Maybe there's something that you can glean from that video as well. So of course, I'll link at some point up here. It'll pop up and then you can go and watch that video of course after this one <laughs> now i have five tips for you for you to improve yourself after you get into a relationship now this topic actually came to fruition because there are a lot of people i'm just gonna be quite frank with you guys hopefully i do not um insult anybody but that's not my intention my intention is to educate but also for you to take action once you come here and actually get the information that you need for you to implement it in your relationship and even your everyday life but with that being said a lot of us get into these relationships and we have no idea what it is that we are doing and and even if I had to guess I would say a close to 50% of people that are in the relationships actually needs to leave those relationships let them dissolve break up whatever word you want to insert there they need to get out of them because they're unhealthy but also maybe they have chosen the wrong person because they didn't know what to look for but they're they've been dealing with this person for now years and now years and years have been passed but they are not getting the things that they want from the relationships where that is where I come in that is what I would help you with to decide if you need to stay or go so if you do need any help with any of that then definitely reach out to me I have my email down in the comment section but I'm sorry not the comment section the description area below which is Marshawn at MarshawnOlanio.com or you can go to MarshawnO.com which is my website and get on my calendar link so we can set up a call and actually take care of some of those things and then talk about how we can work together so either one of those ways would actually work so now I'm gonna get into the topic of today which again is how to improve yourself after you get into the relationship so the very first thing that I want you to be aware of is to be able to take constructive criticism 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 is something that is absolutely going to happen our entire lives and it happening and coming from our spouses our partners is no different there's gonna be something in your relationship that irks you about your spouse but there's also gonna be something that irks your spouse about you so being able to convey the things that you want your partner to work on is very important a lot of times because many of us did not get the tools we did not receive the information from our parents or from our guardians on how to actually show up in our relationships we do and uh, we do and repeat what we actually sing from them whether it was healthy or not and a lot of cussing screaming fussing and fighting is not healthy name calling is not healthy that is not constructive criticism so with that being said what I want you to do is especially if you see that this relationship has some validity to it and can actually grow from from you guys being in a relationship together that you can switch it from being toxic if it is toxic to being healthy think about the the criticism and look for the gem in it look for whatever it is that your partner or spouse is complaining to you about take it run with it and then actually start to work on that thing because that is the thing that is going to pivot and shift and change your relationship completely around if you take care of that thing if you start actively working on it now here here's the thing though once a problem, once an issue is pointed out to you, you're not going to be able to stop doing that thing overnight. 
it is going to be a work in progress it is going to be you messing up and then having to go back to say i'm sorry it's going to be you catching yourself in the moment still doing that thing and then and then catching yourself to say my bad that is how you get better. That is how you shift and change your relationship around. It is one small, tiny thing at a time. If you've been doing something destructive for 15 years, five years, 20 years, you're not going to switch and change that stuff overnight. It is going to be a work in progress, but it's all up to you. Can you shift and change the relationship that you're currently in to the one that you really dream about yes you can but guess what sis guess what bro it is gonna take some sweat some blood and some tears at times maybe not blood but you get my drift right it is gonna take you taking some action in order to shift and change things around so the first thing is to look for the gym and the in the criticism whether it's constructive or not it is criticism it is criticism so look for the gym look for the thing that he or she is complaining about to you and then start to work on correcting that thing the second thing is be willing to shift from the actions and behaviors that you're currently doing that are not working that are not serving your relationship and shift them to the actions and or behaviors that will work that will create the blissful relationship that you want so everything that you know that is going down heal <laughs> stop doing that stuff the stuff even even specifically to whatever the complaint is that your partner is bringing to you stop doing that thing and figure out what it is that you're going to put in place differently so whenever that thing that they did or said triggers you to behave a certain way you have already worked out this is how i'm going to react the next time this happens so you have to be intentional you have to get in front of these things because again if you've been doing this stuff for 5 10 15 years it is not going to switch and stop overnight it's, it's going to be a new learned behavior a new practice that you have to continue to do each and every time that the thing rears its ugly head the third thing that I want you to do and be conscious of is to have relationship check-ins I told you guys once before that me and my husband actually do this we have relationship check-ins now I'm usually the one who initiates them we do it about anywhere from one month to six weeks out and we literally just go and talk to each other about what we're doing right what we can work on and obviously you know what some of the things that could be on the list to say okay well you already doing this good you can step it up a notch or you 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 sucking at this so maybe we can talk about how either i'm going to start doing this thing for myself depending on the conversation depending on what it is that you're asking for but basically you're coming to a solution or even a resolution about the things that you feel are not getting done but again you're having the relationship check-in so that breakup one day will not just be on the horizon and you have no idea why the relationship is ending or you have no idea why um, and anything that you can consider or deem to be bad can show up in your relationship whether that's cheating gambling wh whatever it is right whatever you deem to be overly done <laughs> or bad insert it right there but things can shift and change around one day at a time one small thing at a time number four shut off your electronics now you can do this nightly you can do this once or twice a week or if you don't feel like shutting them off put them in a different room so you can connect with your spouse you can connect with the person that's actually in the room with you versus your versus your virtual people and getting all of those notifications and that is actually instant gratification which is why most of us are so addicted to our devices I'm actually getting much better with this I do not shift I do not turn my phone off I do not I actually even put it in a different room but I put it so so the way my house is 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 made up is like a long living room so I, I'm on one side of the living room and my device is on a different side of the living room so I don't shut it off but my phone is usually on silent so even all of those notifications I don't get all of that so I'm feeling like I need to get the endorphin rush of who's saying something to me who's liking my picture who's liking this who who's you know whatever it is I am 
trying to concentrate on my husband, trying to concentrate if we have guests, trying to concentrate on my daughter or working on my business, whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm trying to devote that time, devote that energy to the thing that is most important to me. Now, do I still pick up my phone? Of course I do, but I am much better at making sure that if I'm watching a movie, I put down the phone for that hour and a half to two hours. Do am I am I graded it every single time? No, but I definitely know the difference in it in it in it in it today versus the way that it used to be. And how do I know? Because now my husband does not make comments about it. He used to make comments about, wow, you always have your phone. You literally you always have your phone. You're always doing something on your phone. And now it's like, wow, you don't have your phone. Till and then he would say that for a while. You're like, wow, you don't have your phone. So now he doesn't even mention my phone when we're having our time together. Now, oddly enough, sometimes I have to mention that he has his phone. Like, um, are we talking or are you talking to the people on your phone? Because I know that this is like a real thing. I try not to take it personally and I try not to think that he just doesn't want to hear me or who is he chatting with or what are they talking about? I try not to go down that road because I do understand that this, this device this phone, this iPad, this computer, this whatever can be a very addictive thing. And it's because it gives us instant gratification. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. So put it in a different room, put it on the opposite side of the room, turn it off or put it on silent, whatever it is that you need to do for a specific amount of time so you can actually connect with your spouse, so you can connect with your partner. So shut them off. Do what you need to do in order to connect with the person that's actually in the room with you versus only your virtual people because this is also where the distance comes in and even stays in when you do not decide to change. And when you don't decide to change, you cannot make or you cannot be mad about why don't we talk anymore? How come he or she doesn't share this with me? How come they seem to connect more with people on the outside? It's because you're not being intentional. And is this also, um, this is never just one person. It's both of you in your, in your relationship. You both have to commit to being intentional about cutting out the distractions because that's exactly what the electronic devices are they can't they can be very great they can do us they can keep us in contact with a lot more people than even before however this can be detrimental to your relationship if you allow it if you allow it if you allow it number oh i say five i say five <laughs> number five guess what I've been implementing this in my own relationship and I know that it's definitely brought us a lot closer together um, and it also well let me tell you what it is first prayer prayer individually as well as prayer together a lot of people don't realize that prayer brings you and your spouse closer together it also intensifies and even enhances your sex life so if you did not know that that is a tidbit of information um, that you can actually use and it's because you get to hear what your spouse is saying about you to God it's not in secret I can hear what my spouse is saying about me and we just started to implement this every single night and actually it's most nights now but most nights it's about five five or six nights out of the week that we actually pray together as a family before we go to sleep the other nights is because literally I just fall asleep and then by the time I wake up it's just too late so <laughs> but yes we have implemented this into our lives and I can already tell the shift I can already tell the deeper connection I can already tell the sex is better like it's a lot of things and a lot of benefits and I, I just totally believe that God actually answers your prayers anyway and um, just as a side note just for some of you maybe somebody out there needs to hear this but I've been praying about us praying as a family for a while i've even talked about it on this channel about how prayer can change and shift your relationship and bring you guys closer together but i wasn't doing it at the time that i was sharing it with you so now i can come here and share with you to say i am actually practicing this myself and i can totally see a difference so if you're on the fence with it then you know I would say still take a deep dive into it if your partner won't do it then just continue to pray and ask God to give a shift some type of shift in your partner's stance so you guys can start praying together so you guys can be even more connected spiritually as well as emotionally and even physically so prayer 
prayer alone as well as as well as prayer together absolutely changes things so those are my five tips but since you've made it this far i'm gonna give you a bonus tip a bonus tip on how to improve yourself after you've gotten into the relationship so you have to remember that you and your mate are two different people trying to come together to bring this relationship and make it whole make it co cohesive and make it run together smooth as one person so you're two different people a him and a her in the relationship and you both most of the time we've grown up in different environments um, and it, sometimes even different parts of the country, at least in my own particular marriage. Um, I'm American, he actually is from the continent of Africa, uh, Nigeria specifically. So there are some differences, right, that come into play. So I've talked about it several times before that we have cultural differences, but I have to say that they're getting even better um specifically the relationship not only is it becoming smoother the cultural differences are smoothing out as well so him and i are just getting a better understanding of one another and we're able to uh, connect and not take not take things so personally even if it's delivered in a crappy way and that's on both ends i'm i'm usually good but sometimes you can catch me on a good day I'm not saying it's right. I said that I am a work in progress and God ain't through with me yet. That's what I'm saying. So as when I talk about this stuff to you, I am also talking to myself more often than you even realize. So with that being said, remember that you two are two different people coming together in this one relationship and you come from different cultures or you could different backgrounds, different upbringings, different environments, and all of that coupled together. Now you're trying to build this relationship together. I always talk about communication, so that is a must. That is what you need to do. Break down the walls, break down the barriers, keep the connection, be vulnerable, open up. If you need help with any of that, again, my email, marshawn at marshawnalonio.com. Send me an email or go to marshawno.com and sign up under my calendar link and let's talk together about shifting and changing your relationship around i love you guys there's nothing that you can do about it if you made it this far and you have not given me a like like and then subscribe to the channel bye now <laughs>